Let me take it back to like two and a half years ago when my channel first started taking off. Around that time, I made a video about the teen drama classic, Teen Wolf. And immediately after I published it, MTV blocked it in the US. Now that encompasses about half of my entire audience, so many of you have never seen that video and probably have no idea that I even did a video about Teen Wolf. And so I got the idea to do a little HD remake, shall we say. Because let me tell you, my animation skills back then were amazing. So one more time, let's take a walk and check out Teen Wolf. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Now it's 2020 and pretty much everyone knows what a VPN is. It protects you when you're on the internet, it stops your IP address from being hacked and your personal data getting exposed. I mean, everybody needs one. But Surfshark VPN goes above and beyond your typical VPN. You can use it on as many devices as you want with just one subscription. They also offer HackLock ID protection that checks to see if your personal data has been leaked anywhere, like usernames, passwords, that kind of thing. So you can stay one step ahead. They also offer a service called Blind Search, which is a completely private and organic search engine free from data tracking and overreaching algorithms. And get this, you can sign up to Surfshark VPN today by going to surfshark.deals slash Alex Myers and use the promo code Alex Myers to get 83% off the regular price when you sign up for a two-year subscription. That means you get premium VPN services and a guaranteed peace of mind using any device or all of them at the same time, plus three extra months for free. So if you don't have a VPN, then you really need to sign up. But even if you already have one, go to surfshark.deal slash Alex Myers and use the promo code Alex Myers to give Surfshark a try. Okay, back to the show. The show begins with Scott, who apparently plays lacrosse. Now, this is something I've noticed covering all these teen dramas and stuff. Like, there's always at least one kid who plays lacrosse, which oddly enough is 100% more people than I've actually ever seen in real life play lacrosse. Anyway, Scott hears a noise and goes out to investigate. <laughs> You weren't answering your phone! Why are you a bat? <laughs> <laughs> Technology? I don't know. I thought maybe someone might just come along and hang upside down outside of my house in the middle of the night. But yes, clearly I'm the oddball in this situation. <laughs> what was I thinking? This guy, Styles, tells Scott that the police found a dead body in the woods, and so of course they set out to go find it. Ultimately, Styles ends up getting caught, but upholding the sacred bro code, doesn't rat Scott out. Now, Scott, by himself, wanders around in the woods and gets chased and attacked by some mysterious something and barely escapes with his life. Then, we fast forward to the next day at school, where we meet the local tough guy with phallic issues, Jackson. <laughs> Dude, watch the paint job. Yo, Jackson, let's go, bro. Anyway, walking into school, Scott tries to tell Styles what happened to him that night in the forest, but of course, Styles doesn't buy it. As the conversation goes on, we learn one very important piece of information about Scott. I found the body. Are you kidding me? God, that is freaking awesome. <laughs> I mean, this is seriously gonna be the best thing that's happened to this town since, since the birth of Lydia Martin. Hey, Lydia, you look like you're gonna ignore me. You're the cause of this, you know? Uh-huh. Dragging me down to your nerd depths? Uh-huh. I'm a nerd by association. Okay, first of all, I think you're doing most of that yourself, all right? But more importantly, so the setting of the show is that Scott is supposed to be like a nerd, a loser, a nobody, right? This is a perfect example of that whole like Hollywood nerd thing that still happens sometimes. You're telling me that a guy who looks like this or like this, who plays on the most popular sports team in his whole school is a nerd? The kid who looks like a younger version of that hot guy from Love Actually is a loser? <laughs> okay, MTV, yeah, sure, mm -hmm, I totally believe you. It's like in those movies where the girl's supposed to be like ugly or whatever, and then she just straightens her hair and puts on eyeliner, and then suddenly everyone's like, oh, who's this? Make a teen drama with a kid who looks like me back in high school, and then we'll talk, all right? Anyway, we're then introduced to Allison, the new girl in school. Out in the hallway, Allison meets up with Jackson and his girlfriend, who have a wonderfully bizarre conversation. So, this weekend, there's a party. A party? Yeah, Friday night. You should come. Uh, I can. It's family night this Friday. Thanks for asking. You sure? I mean, everyone's going after the scrimmage. You mean like football? Football's a joke if you can. The sport here's the cross. <laughs> I mean, okay, can, can you just imagine some like tough looking jock guy comes up to you and leans in on your locker all creepy You catch a whiff of old tires and gasoline because that's what every guy's cologne smells like for some reason And he says football is for losers. I play lacrosse <laughs> It's okay, dude, good for you. Anyway, after school, I assume, Scott goes to his team lacrosse trials to see who's gonna be first string. And of course, since Jackson also plays lacrosse, his girlfriend and Allison are there too. Call! Yeah. You're in goal! Uh, 
I've never played. I know. Scoring some shots will give the boys a confidence boost. Heh. <laughs> Thanks, coach. During the match, Scott catches every ball and somehow humiliates Jackson in the process, which of course means Jackson's girlfriend doesn't like him anymore and now likes Scott instead, because that's a very solid foundation for a relationship. Later that day, Scott is alone in an animal clinic where I assume he works, because otherwise that'd be pretty weird, when suddenly Allison shows up all discombobulated and tells Scott that she hit a dog with her car. Now Scott takes it in and with his new magic werewolf powers, makes it all better. Thanks for doing this. I feel really stupid. How come? I don't know, because I freaked out like a total girl. You are a girl. I freaked out like a girly girl, and I'm not a girly girl. Allison and Scott then share a little moment where he takes an eyelash off her cheek, which went really differently when I tried it back in high school, okay? I'll tell you what. Hey, you have a little eyelash right there on your pepper spray. However, on the way out, Scott musters up the courage to ask Allison a very important question. I was wondering, I mean, is it really family night on Friday? Or do you think maybe you'd like to go to that party with me? Family night was a total lie. So is that a yes, you'll go? Definitely yes. Anyway, the next day at school, Jackson, now humiliated because Scott cut my bow, confronts Scott over his new Peter Parker-ness. All right, little man. How about you tell me where you're getting your juice? What? Where are you getting your juice? Well, personally, I'm a fan of Capri Sun myself, although sometimes the straw doesn't go in quite the right way, then you gotta like suck it out of the hole like some kind of weird butterfly having a stroke. But I mean, you know, other than that, it's pretty good. What's going on with me? You really wanna know? Well, so would I, because I can see, hear, and smell things that I shouldn't be able to see, hear, and smell. I do things that should be impossible. I'm sleepwalking three miles into the middle of the woods, and I'm pretty much convinced that I'm totally out of my freaking mind. Yeah, you know, the same thing happened to me back when I hit puberty. I mean, one minute I'm just sitting there in my basement watching Toonami, and the next minute... Well, actually, I was just doing the exact same thing, but now my voice sounded really cool. The next day, Styles is trying to find out what might be happening to Scott and why he has these new, like, magic powers. I've been up all night reading websites, books, all this information. I started doing all this reading. Do you even know why a wolf howls? Should I? It's a signal. Okay, well, when a wolf's alone, it howls to signal its location to the rest of the pack. So if you heard a wolf howl, that means others could have been nearby. I mean, maybe in a whole pack of them. A whole pack of wolves? No, werewolves. Well, that's a jump. Hey, did you know that wolves howl to find each other? Oh, so there's wolves in the forest? No, werewolves. Did I miss half of this conversation? How'd we get here? We'll talk tomorrow. Tomorrow? What? No, the full moon's tonight. Don't you get it? What are you trying to do? I, I just made first line. I, I got a date with a girl who I can't believe wants to go out with me. You're cursed, Scott. You know, and it's not just that the moon will cause you to physically change. It also just so happens to be when your bloodlust will be at its peak. Bloodlust. Yeah, your urge to kill. I'm already starting to feel an urge to kill, Styles. <laughs> Funny. Later, Scott goes to pick up Allison, who between you and me cleans up pretty good, and they head off to the party. At the party, Scott suddenly realizes that day-old Taco Bell is in fact not okay to eat and rushes home, leaving Allison all alone to be taken home by this guy, Derek. Allison. My friend of Scott's. My name's Derek who definitely does not look like his grandma just got him a gift card to Hot Topic. At home, Scott turns into a werewolf because it's like a full moon and all that, and he realizes that Derek was also a werewolf the whole time. This is also where we learn that being a werewolf means the whole world just kind of looks like you're playing a virtual boy. But anyway, he heads off to find Derek and stop him from eating Allison, or whatever it is he thinks is going on. But after he finds him, a bunch of dudes with crossbows show up and start trying to shoot Scott because really, what else could go wrong today? After escaping, Derek and Scott have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk about everything that just happened. Who are they? Hunters. Kind of been hunting us for centuries. Us? You mean you? You did this to me! Is it really so bad, Scott, that you can see better, hear more clearly, move faster than any human could ever hope? And be hunted by Renaissance Fair cosplayers with crossbows. I mean, hey, it's a pretty sweet gig, am I right? The next day, Scott apologizes to Allison, who's slightly perturbed, but I mean, hey, Scott's a werewolf now, so like, what's she gonna do, say no? no I'm really sorry, I am. But you're gonna have to trust that I had a really good reason. Did you get sick? I definitely had an attack of something. Am I gonna get an explanation? Can you just find it in your heart to trust me on this one? Am I gonna regret this? Probably. Me talking to every girl I've ever gone on a date with. And then at the very end, we find out that Allison's dad is the crossbow guy. So, you know. Bwah.
Like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, this video has been blocked for almost its entire lifespan, at least in the US and US territories and all that. So like 47, almost 50% of my audience like can't even watch the video at all. And so I've wanted to kind of go back and like redo it in some way, like now and then, but I guess I just never got around to it because things got busy and like, oh, Netflix is putting out Kissing Booth again, gotta do that, you know? But I just thought like, you know, coming off of the whole like Disney Nickelodeon thing I was doing over the summer. I was trying to think like what I should kind of do before we get into the holiday season and all that. And so thinking of Teen Wolf and just think about how like most of you all have never seen that video or maybe didn't even know I did one because it doesn't even like show up when you search for it because it's blocked. And so it's like, you know, this might be a good time to go back and redo it. Something I've been toying with in my head a little bit is kind of going back to some of the older shows I've done because like, you know, I think my videos now are much better than they were back then just in terms of animation, but also like writing uh, the way I think has certainly evolved over the last couple of years. And so going back now and doing like Gossip Girl or uh, Pretty Little Liars or Vampire Diaries or whatever, like with kind of my current mindset, like not necessarily remaking the videos uh, wholesale like I did with this one, but kind of re-watching them again now, you know, almost three years later, you know, how do I see them now? How do I feel about them now? Because, you know, a lot of the, the big teen dramas that I did, I did back when I was first starting out and didn't really know. I didn't have like a format, didn't really have a, I didn't, you know, I didn't have like my, my voice figured out quite yet. And so now that I have that more or less established, it might be interesting to go back and watch some older shows or not older shows, but like shows that I've made videos about in the past and then kind of see how I feel about it or not. I don't know. Anyway, thanks so much for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so I don't miss any videos from me. I have a new podcast out. It's called Doing the Devil's Tango. It's like a dating story advice kind of podcast where, you know, just kind of like a dating advice, dating story type of podcast. I don't know. If you're interested, links down below. Check it out. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.